is really Hello guys, welcome back to my new video. Extra, 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 ext
Just grind up. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
Click it. Are you tired of paying full price for makeup, pins, toys, shoes, kitchen wear, lipstick, car home stuff, car car home stuff, pet stuff, pet stuff, pet stuff? I cannot stress this enough. You. Clicking the button right here, here. can download and install Honey in like 10 now, seconds I've and save money at more than 30,000 online I've done. stores. You what are you do doing? Anything. Honey searches for coupons automatically. All you have to do is click right here. Oh, I'm going to pick some right now. So about as mm. as you get. Bet you're glad you didn't skip that now. High five to me. I saved the dodo. Hello there, my person. I'm a designer, and I use Fusion 360. You got to the dodo. I love how it Get out of my way! I'm sorry. Fusion 360. One product, unlimited possibilities. Okay, we got this and set up. Can I pick a person? I hope so. Come here. Come here, try. No, stop pooping. Yeah. Okay. 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 Let's go. 
Izuku was basically unstoppable and by the end of the time limit, Izuku had a racked up an impressive score, 590 points. Izuku felt good about his performance and was ready to head back to tell everyone how it went. But before he could, Izuku heard screams ringing out all around the arena. He easily scaled up a building to get a better view of what was going on. But then he saw a huge robot coming down the street, and from below a girl screaming that she was trapped under some rubble. Izuku didn't need to do this but he knew that heroes must be watching. So if he stuck his neck out to save this girl, he would be commended. Izuku smiled at his brilliance and dropped down to save the girl. He picked up the rubble off her easily and realized it was the same girl from earlier. She thanked him for the help and he said don't worry about it and he picked her up bridal style and before the zero hunter could squash them, Izuku with a swift slash of his sword cut the robot's arm allowing him to escape. Izuku brought Uraraka back where she was treated by recovery. Izuku not wanting to stick around ran back to the base and he was as happy as ever. He went inside and was surprised there were two people there that he never saw. A guy that looked like burnt toast and a schoolgirl. Shigaraki turned around and said, Oh, Izuki, you're back. Time to meet the new members of the team. They'll be helping us out. Zuku wasn't too happy having more people on the team. It wasn't like he and Shigaraki couldn't get work done. But Shigaraki explained that they're here to help us out with a big plan to take on the city all night. The big question is, how would they manage this? Would the team even get along? Well, find out next time because that is where I'm going to be leaving this one off. If you guys have any powers you would like to see Izuku use, if you want to make a thousand dollars Hey, I'm Talon and this is Rumpus and I'm going to show you how to start an online t-shirt business. Let's go. First, go to Shopify.com and start a free trial. Next, create your t-shirt. You can use your own designs or hire a freelance designer. Once you have a design you love, add it to a t-shirt and put it on your store. Now launch your store and start selling. Starting an online t-shirt business is easier than ever with print on demand services. Print on demand handles your inventory, packaging, and shipping for you. Here's how it works. A customer buys one of your custom t-shirts. The order is then automatically sent to your print on demand service for printing. It's then packaged and shipped directly to your customer. With print on demand, you can start a business for less money, less time, and less risk than traditional business models. And you never pay for a product until you've sold it. This means you can spend your time marketing your products, creating new designs, and talking to your customers. Because you don't have to worry about inventory or shipping. So what are you waiting for? Go to Shopify.com and start your t-shirt business today. Raid Shadow Legends made me a champion. Here's how it happened. This is the tale of an orphan adopted by the Shadow King who grew to become a mighty warrior. He suffered greatly. Not my best look. But kept training, facing every challenge. Now we're talking. Transforming into a true Shadow King ninja. This is so awesome! Download Raid Shadow Legends and get the legendary ninja champion for free. Oh, 
Yo, what is up, guys? I'm going here with part two of what if Naruto was a sin. Sorry for the huge break, but you know, exams are right around the corner, so I have to prepare and stuff. So I hope you all understand. But without any further ado, I hope you guys are going to enjoy it. Slightly went red and punched him playfully and said, Sh Shut up, man. So they laughed for a bit, and Izuku said, Fine, so what are we gonna do with all that? And Shigaraki started to explain, While we make a distraction at the main gate, you go to the principal's office and take All Might's files for where and when you'll be teaching. Return it to us. He says, How does that sound? And Izuku puts up his fist and says, Sounds like a plan and they fist bump. So fast forward to During this time, Izuku has just been waiting for his acceptance letter. He and the new members have gotten to know each other a bit, just some small talk here and there. Unlike their first interaction, Izuku's conversation with Toga would always take a sharp ability from your favorite fruit to the taste of your blood. But Izuku actually found her obsession kind of amusing. Anyways, to the present day, and Izuku is working out when one of her various portals opened, and out of it, another one came out. Izuku quickly dropped his weight and said, You must be, you should have called me. Oh my god! You need to come back. Oh. Not for one second, but I have something important for you, Izuku. Congratulations on your entry to the world. Make me proud. He flicks a disc like a coin into Izuku's hands and walks back through the portal. Izuku looks down at it and it had My Hero Academia etched onto its edge. Izuku placed it on his bed and a hologram of All Might appeared. At the same time, Shigaraki walked in and he saw this hologram of All Might and without even knowing what it was, he shot beside Izuku to watch. He got there just in time to hear Welcome to Your Hero Academia. Shigaraki was a bit confused what that meant and Izuku turned to him and said, I made it into UA. Shigaraki's eyes widened and bear hugged Izuku saying congrats. And while they were celebrating, Dobby walked in and they both called him. Shigaraki saw him and quickly dropped Izuku and cleared his throat and said, uh, uh, Good work, the LOV will do good with the spies on the side. And walked out. <laughs> After Izuku recovered from the whole licking incident, they got to talk and realized she was a pretty good person. And uh, you know what, I struggle to say it good because we all know Toga. She's psycho, but you know, Izuku will have to learn it the hard way. But anyways, Izuku goes to UA in his new uniform and makes his way to class. He does struggle to find it, but while he's doing that, Izuku takes a mental note of all the hallways and rooms in the school. So he got to his class and as soon as he got in he heard a familiar voice. Izuku looks towards the back of the class and sees the good for nothing. He balls his fist but he knows he has to calm down because he can't take care of him just yet. So Izuku goes to the back of the class and sits by the window, you know, regular main character stuff. 
So after around another minute of Ida and Bakugo arguing, Aizawa has had enough. He gets up like this. Can I get some sleep? So he gets up and tells everyone to spell. And everyone goes silent. And Ida said, Who are you? And Aizawa said, I'm your homeroom teacher. And Ida, like, he was scared. He didn't want to make a bad impression on the So he quickly sat down. Aizawa waited another five seconds until the class was completely silent and began to explain. Aizawa's eyes widened, he, he looked down at the monitor and said, it's an error. Aizawa was honestly shocked because that was pure strength. He didn't sense as he anything. He collected himself and said, also Kaido. Also Kaido is going to be Kazuki's alias. So am I just sick with Kaido? Anyways, everyone in the class was blown away by this performance. The work application test continues with his great record after record. Some set by Almighty himself. So Bakugo was watching his opening the entire time it's like he reminds me of someone but he just can't place his finger on it. But anyways, Zuku goes on to dominate the test and places number one over. Chaco actually comes over to congratulate her. He was wondering why she was being so friendly, but didn't mind. You know, she's probably just a kind person. So I had everyone return to class. Walking back to Chaco, shut up another conversation. Just talking about stuff like their past. 
And by the way, all for one gig is into a whole script he should follow about his whole life story. And he made sure to memorize every single one. So the day goes on without much incident till lunchtime. During lunch, Gita, Uraraka, and Kirishima all have lunch together, and Izuku is eating his favorite katsuda. But as he took his first bite, the school alarms went off, and people started panicking. And they've never been in a sort of drill, so they start running around to the emergency exit, and Izuku and his group run over to it as well. But Izuku manages to sneak off. Because of the panic, everyone ran to the emergency exit, leaving the hallways empty. And this was his time to make a move. So Izuku memorized where the Nezu office was, and he goes there, and he checks the door to see if it's open, and in his luck, the door was unlocked. He slowly opened it and walked inside. Izuku was grinning ear to ear. He walked around to the corner of the office to the filing cabinet labeled teaching schedule and Izuku started flipping through. It was exactly what he came for. He took All Might's file and quickly pulled, it, pulled out his notebook and started copying the information because it would look sus if a file were missing. So it was a lot to write down and before he could even finish he started hearing people talking coming from down the hall. He acted quickly and shoved the file back in, making sure everything was like he came in and saw it. So Izuku walked out casually and locked the door behind him. Two seniors who were walking past stopped and said, is everything alright? And Izuku had morphed his face into something different so they wouldn't be recognized. And he responded in a deeper voice and said, yeah, everything's fine, I'm heading to the emergency exit. The boy said, oh, well, uh, alright, the name's Mirio by the way, and they both extended their hands to him in a shake, and said, nice to meet you Mirio, I am uh, Naruto, and Mirio is like, oh, like that one anime character, and Izuku nervously laughed and said, yeah, and Mirio chuckled and said, damn, your parents must hate you, <laughs> anyways man, I'm off, and Izuku morphs his face back quickly and runs back to the lunch. So by now the situation was under control due to Ida and Ochako's poor combo, Ida getting above the crowd and explaining what happened. So everyone calmed down and eventually the teachers arrived to tell everyone what happened with the news reporters and that they just have the rest of the day off. Hearing this everyone was obviously excited, you know, they get a half day off from school and quickly got their stuff to leave. So while packing, Ochako turned to Izuku and said, Hey, where did you go in all the chaos? I, it's like I couldn't find you. Izuku said, Oh, I, you know, I just got lost a bit, but some seniors helped me out. Ochako didn't question it and they walked out to the school gates, you know, talking together. But Izuku had to go in a different direction than Ochako, so they said their goodbyes. On top of a building across the road from Yue, a girl was watching, Toga. She saw how friendly Yuzuku was being with this girl, and she swears if she ever lays a finger on him, she's as good as dead. Toga was caught up in her thoughts that she didn't even realize she lost Izuku. She started looking around and couldn't find him, but from behind her, someone tapped her shoulder. Toga's reflex kicked in and whipped out a knife to slash Izuku, but luckily it missed and Toga realized who it was and calmed down. Oh, Izuku, how did you get up here? Izuku said, I should be asking why you're stalking me. And Toga laughed nervously and said, well, I was actually making sure you got to the base all right. You never know what those hero students are capable of. Izuku sighed and said, let's just get back to base. Beat you there. And Izuku ran off. Toga knows she doesn't even stand a chance, so she doesn't try to catch up, but, you know, she runs behind him. So he makes it back to base and immediately tells Shigaraki he got the information. Shigaraki was so excited, but before the celebration could last, from the shadows of the room, all for one spoke. Good work, Izuku. You too, Tomura. They both quickly bowed to him and all for one continued. Shigaraki, I approve of your plan, but if it fails, I have a plan of my own with Dr. Ijiko, so don't disappoint.
Todoroki professed, I, I won't master, but when they looked up, he was gone. So the next day at UA, Izuku was in class waiting when All Might bust through the door saying, Coming through the door like a normal person. Everyone was excited, I mean, it's All Might. All Might looked over the room to get a good look at everyone, then said, Now class, Azawa left me with another test for you. Everyone groaned, but All Might went on to explain all the rules. Some people were actually starting to get interested, like excited, and one of them being Bakugo. We can finally put this Kaido guy in his place. So everyone puts on their hero outfit they designed, except Izuku. He actually didn't design any costume, so he just wears the usual PE gear. So, All Might starts to pick the teams at random, and he chooses Izuku versus both Bakugo and Ida. Everyone was confused why it was a 1v2, but All Might explained that this was just a simple test. Izuku scored very high on the entrance exam, even beating his record. So he wants to see Izuku's strength first time. I mean, no one could argue with him, there were all curious as well. So Bakugo and Ida got into the building to set up. Meanwhile, Izuku was just standing by, you know, chilling, until the signal was given, and he went into the mock building. Izuku's sword Lost Vein appeared, and he had been working on a move, and this would be the perfect time to try it out. So he goes upstairs and gets to the third floor, he's hearing explosions coming right towards him. At the end of the hall he was in, the wall explodes and from the smoke, Bakugo appears. There is something to prove, he runs towards Izuku saying, you're so weak, I won't even have to use my quirk. But to Izuku, this was a child's play. Bakugo tried to fight using kicks or using his gauntlets to hit Izuku, but nothing landed. Izuku had a perfect mastery of many martial arts and started to taunt Bakugo saying, Is that all? Come on, my mom's stronger than this. Wow, I can't believe they're letting people like you in. And all of this began to eat away at Bakugo's fragile ego and he said, Oh yeah, but we'll see who's laughing now. And he jumps back and pulls both pins and says, Die! In the past seven days, we've done over $100,000 in sales. And this is all uh, working from home in my home office right here. And I'm Matthew Lefree. I'm the founder of... The explosion goes off flying towards Izuku. But he smirks and says, Full counter. Using his sword, Izuku slices the attack away. And it went right back at Bakugo with twice the power. He didn't even realize what happened until it was too late. It hit Bakugo, sending him through the concrete wall and into an adjacent building. Zuku was trying his hardest to hold back his sadistic smile. One day he's gonna kill that bastard. But this test is what is important now. So Izuku quickly runs upstairs and before he opens the door he says to himself let's just finish this quickly and a mark appears on his forehead and in this form Izuku had to be careful his control of his own body is limited so he may accidentally kill him. As Izuku comes into the door Ida boosts into a roundhouse kick but Izuku grabs his legs right out of the air and begins squeezing down, putting an immense pressure on his bones. Ida started screaming in pain. All Might and the students in the observation room were starting to get worried, but Izuku dropped him and in a blur ran towards the missile, touching it, winning the competition. And All Might said, hero team win. Izuku and Ida returned to the observation room while some bots recovered Bakugo and brought him to a recovery girl. All Might just didn't know what to think of Izuku. It was like he had some sort of strength quirk, but how did he do that thing with Bakugo's explosion? It just doesn't make sense. So All Might was going to keep a close eye on Izuku. All Might asked the class who was the MVP of the battle and it was a unanimous decision. They all chose, of course, the Sin of Wrath himself, Izuku. So after 
after this, everyone else does their fights like normal, and Bakugo eventually recovers. But now he has a growing hatred towards Kaido. Now on to the next school day. In class, Aizawa came out to announce the trip to the USJ. This will be the rescue training of course, where they will work with the Hero 13 to practice, well, rescue training. So after class, Izuku walked up to Aizawa and said, Sensei, I don't think I'll be able to make it. Recently, a family member of mine died. And Aizawa was very sympathetic with Izuku. He told him, you know, there would be a tons of hero trainings throughout the year, so missing out on one isn't too much of a big deal. And with that, everyone went home to prepare for the hero training on the next day. What could Izuku be up to? Find out next time, because that is where I'm going to be leaving this one off. Thank you guys for sticking around to the end of the video. If you liked it, like. And if you like my content in general, subscribe, you know it's free, and it helps your boy out. So, I'll see you guys in the next video. Did you know that you can make money from YouTube without creating videos? That's right, you can... Hey, what is up guys, your boy Uzukage here with a new what if, and this what if is what if Goku had all for one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and let's begin. Okay, I'm gonna start off with how everyone has all for one. Basically, in this one, he has no real family ties to the actual all for one. So I'm gonna say Goku is just born with it. Like, if all for one was born with it, why can't he? So with that played up, let's get into it. Deku is at the court doctor, waiting for his results, playing around with Bakugo, you know, with the action figures and stuff. And Deku accidentally touched Bakugo. But, you know, it's just a touch, they didn't think anything of it, and they just kept on playing. So, Izuku was called into the office, but before we get to that, let's see what the test that the doctor run was. So when they tested Izuku, he realized that he actually had the quirk to steal quirks. He doesn't know about like the giving part but that won't be mentioned until later in the series. But yeah, like one of the nurses Izuku touched lost her quirk. And I'm going to say it was something, it wasn't really anything important, like she had a hair growth perk, I guess. You can regulate how fast or slow she grows her hair. Yeah, that's pretty simple. All right, and when Izuku left, the nurse realized her quirk was gone and told the doctor. You know, he was like, whoa, this, this kid can steal quirks? What, what the heck, this is, this is all for one material. You know, so he immediately went and called uh, All Might because this doctor actually works for many pro heroes so he knows about you know one for all and all for one and what this kid could like turn into if they don't deal with this now so back to the present when Izuka and Inko went into the office they sat down and the doctor explained that you know Izuka had a very powerful quirk and if he didn't train it he could become a villain well, Inko was worried, but Deku was on cloud nine. Like he he went around. He like what the doctor said after he said very powerful quirk. That's where Deku just stopped. He wasn't listening anymore. He just got excited, started pretending to be All Might, you know, running around and stuff. But you know when he actually finally calmed down a little, there was a knock at the doctor's door. You no, know, he says, uh, "Who is it?" no response you know, and then the door just got kicked in and a bunch of S FBI agents ran in you know they pushed past Inko knocking her to the ground and handcuffed Deku with a part nullifying cuff Doctor was confused and tried stopping them with his uh, I'll say he has a, a barrier quirk you know but one of the agents just punched right through it Inko was on the ground crying because her son was dragging, being dragged away like, like some criminal or something. And Deku, he was even more confused. 
Yeah, the agents, the agents just carried him out of the building, and as soon as they left, this short, fat guy, you know, big belly, in a black suit, came into the office, and they, you know, they, they just tell Inko that if they don't take her son, he will become a villain. And Inko was saying stuff like, you can't just take my child, yada, yada, yada. And the guy, he was saying he would put him to good use and be a service to his country. And he just walked off. Inko was obviously like mad and angry, but she couldn't do anything. But yeah, to Izuki's perspective, you know, he was knocked out. And when he woke up, he was in like this, this bedroom, but it was like his bedroom at home, but there was like a toilet and a dining table towards the back of the room. And the only door in the room was this huge metal door. Like he couldn't budge it. Yeah. And let me explain why the FBI were there. Basically, when the FBI were monitoring the calls and when the doctor made that call to All Might, you know, they heard this, they were like, whoa, a quirk to steal quirks? Like, we, we could use this. Like, there could be no more criminals. So, you know, they went and got him and before All Might could get there. You know, they wanted to use him for his own purpose. Alright, so Deku, he's still in the room and he saw someone's shadow approach underneath the door. It opened and the same guy who talked to Inko walked in. Kid, you're, you're finally awake. I thought you might have died. Those guys need to hold back sometimes. Uh, uh, wh wh where am I? No, he's a little kid, so he's scared. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. Well, you're in a maximum security prison. Here we house the baddest of the bad criminals, you know. Murderers, cannibals, school shooters. <laughs> uh, I'm joking. Okay, but what what am I doing here? Kid, you aren't a prisoner, well, in the normal sense of the word, but you see, you have a unique ability. The quirk to steal quirks. And we could use that around here. The deck is still confused and the guy just said, come with me. So they go out and they see all the prison cells and some of the criminals are just staring at Deku as he walk by. You know, one of them said, mm, fresh meat, I want peace. <laughs> Shit, that was really good. Alright, yeah. So, yeah, they walk through the prison and they go to this one cellmate. Ah, cellmate, inmate. They go to this one inmate. In Can I speak? Inmate. And the guy was like, touch him. Izuka was like, no, he, he looks disgusting. Because the guy, you know, he hasn't bathed, you know, they don't take them out of themselves. It's just, yeah. And he's like, just, just touch him. So, you know, Izuka reached in and touched the guy on the shoulder. The guy had a, I don't know, a perk to create knives out of his fingertips. Yeah, that, that. So, you know, the knives that he had it trying to cut Deku, they immediately went away. And the biggest grin went on the guy's face, you know, with the suit. And he was like, good, we weren't, we, we got good in time. Yeah, we're gonna use you around here. So, Izuku, they stop on some bird nullification cuffs again. Because he's gonna be taking first, but they don't want him to use them. And the room that he stays in, that whole room is like an area to nullify for. So they take him back to his room and right now he's four. And for the next year, they've just been taking in criminals and you know, letting Deku take their perks. And the news gets word that you know the government has a way of taking people's quirks. And Inko, she's, you know, she's at home, she's still crying. I'm gonna say Hisashi's still there, you know. She's crying in his arms. And she sees the news and she immediately knows it's Deku, like, 
common. It's not common to have that work. So she actually, you know, wants to do something. So she becomes a lawyer. You know, she studies, but it's gonna take a while. So yeah, back to Izuku. Um, over the year, now he's five. Over the years, he's been taking a few people's quirks, like one quirk every month. So even in courtrooms, there's now a new sentence. Instead of actually going to prison, you can't have your quirk stolen. <coughs> So I'm gonna say, you know, villains get word of this, and you uh, know, all for one actually gets word of it. Like, you know, someone like me, this might be interesting. But yeah, I'm gonna say crime rate also goes down eh, around 1%, you know, because people are like, yeah, I could steal this money, but I kinda want my quirk. So yeah. It doesn't go down that much, but yeah, it goes down. And Deku, Deku is just, he's really, really and truly being treated like, like a prisoner. Like the only time he sees anyone is pretty much when they come, to, when he takes someone's work. Also guys, comment down below like what perks do you want Deku to come? He has all the ones, so. Yeah, I have a few on my mind, but... Yeah, I'm gonna actually switch to Bakugo's perspective. So when he went home from you know that crazy stuff that happened at the doctor's office, he tried he he wanted to train his quirk because he heard that Deku had a really powerful quirk, so he didn't want him to one of him. So he went to make explosions, but there was nothing. So he was really confused and he tried to force it and he realized you know, he, he didn't have his quirk anymore. He was still forced so he went and cried to his mom saying oh, he doesn't have his quirk yada yada yada. And you know, Bakugo just has been sad for like the past month. But you know, we, we all know Bakugo, he's strong headed. So he's been researching a way to, you know, unlock your quirk or get back a quirk or even just gain a quirk in general. So he comes across this sketchy site. It's like one you know, of those, those, he's on the dark web basically. Like, you want a quirk? Come to um, 914 Dagobah Alleyway or whatever. So yeah, one night Bakugo actually awful. sneaks out and goes to the place and he sees this mist start surrounding him and then he gets teleported into like, a bar. So, also, I should mention Bakugo, he, he hates Deku like, with a passion because Mitsuki told Bakugo that like, he overheard Mitsuki talking to Inko that Deku actually had the quirk to steal quirks so he basically summed up that you know, when he touched him and he stole his quirk you know, I mean it wasn't on purpose but you know he hates Deku <laughs>
push it in so he thinks if he can slide something there you know to block it from you know closing he could actually like creep out and get up so he tries it one day and it actually works so Deku is out of the and there's a hole in the main cells so Deku has actually, actually has a transformation for it. He can turn into, you know, animals for a short period of time, like one minute, because he hasn't really trained any of the perks he has. So Deku, he becomes this happy throughout the prison and finds some happy escapes and comes back. And all the guards see him and start rushing at him. You know, sirens going off, the whole prison is on lockdown. And Deku is running and the guys and Deku gets sniped in his ankles. You know, it wasn't a headshot but you know, it slowed him down. And uh, but Deku has a healing factor, like he can heal really fast. So that's healed up in like 20 seconds. And Deku activated another perk he got. It's a speed perk. So Deku can increase his speed by two. So he does the prison and he goes out. He runs into a forest where you know he thinks no one will come. In the forest for a long time, you know, scavenging for food. And during this time, the you know FBI agents have been looking for him, so that is why he's on the moon. He sees a city and he puts still the hoodie and puts it on. He goes around the city and starts touching people and he sees people and get a part to hide by the Himself an illusion. So he makes himself an illusion as like another person around his age. And he goes, uh, and around this time, the, oh shit, the timeline doesn't match up. Alright, timeline doesn't match up. So yeah, just retcon the whole, you know, he gets a quirk every month. So he gets, he gets like, he gets, been in the prison for She actually finds out that her son escaped and uh, she's been looking for him. So, yeah, Izuku, he's still walking around the city and he notices on like a flyer that um, UA is doing a their entrance exams, you know, a week away. So, Deku is interested, you know, he still wants to be a hero. But uh, while he was in the prison, you know, he, he got kind of a, he doesn't really trust people all that much. So he normally stays to himself. And yeah, so before the entrance exam, he's, you know, just been training. And 
one day he came across this group of villains trying to steal this little girl, trying to kidnap this little girl. So as uh, you know, Deku sees them grab her and start running. He activates his speed quirk and runs up to them and punches both of them in the head, you know, knocking them over. And it wasn't that hard, so they didn't really get knocked over. So you know, the guys drop the girl. has a strength boost quirk so one of the guys you know boosts his strength by three and dodges Deku's punch and goes in for his own punch but you know Deku's speed quirk so he, he dodges that and gives the guy a right hook in the face you know knocking him out and the other guy sees this and he's like yeah I kind of I kind of want to live so he just starts running but Deku is like, hey, yeah, nah, bro, what are you doing? Get back here. So he goes, knocks out that guy as well, and throws both of them into an alleyway. And then the girl walks up to him, and she's like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. She's bowing and stuff. Deku's like, it, it, it's okay. He's like, please, you know, tell me your name, tell me your name. It's like, it's, it's, is you know, he stops himself. He doesn't want anyone to know his actual identity. It's... <laughs> yeah, that, that, that'll work. Zuka. Thank, oh my god, it is Zuka. Thank, thank you. I'm, I'm Sh Shoko. Shoko Todoroki. Oh my god, man, nice to meet you. Yeah, the thanks again. And you know, she waves and runs away. No, they can see her. You know, she was kind of acting weird, but. portion you know ace is that you know mezzo intelligence even correct some questions and uh, they're about to start the the robot test and he goes to walk up in front of the gates you know because he wants to be the first one out and Ida walks up to him and is like hey wh what are you doing you were going to talk to that girl over there it's like no i was going to the front of the gate I know uh, you you were going to talk to that girl. Like, Deku's just like Deku just tries to walk past him. And then Ida grabs him by the shoulder. But Deku just grabs his wrist and like brings it up, almost breaking it. And then Toto uh Toto, um Ida drops to the ground and he's like, oh please stop, stop. Like, okay, don't ever touch me again, you filth. And, you know, he throws his hands away. And walks to the front and the present mic is like three two go 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 and that's where i'm gonna end it all right i hope you guys like this video this video i didn't really have that like a complex of a script you know i just had a little outline and you know I, most of the times i just went with the flow do you want to grow your YouTube channel? Do you want to earn more views, more subscribers, more watch time, and do Hey, what is up guys? Your boy Izakage here with part two of What If Deku Had All For One. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and let's begin. So before we get into the what if, I'm going to go over some of the quirks that Deku has. Some of the one I mentioned in the last part were intelligence, super speed, and the illusion quirk. That hides him, that hides his actual identity. He also has element manipulation, wind, water, earth, fire, stuff like that. Regeneration, and a quirk that I don't hear a lot of people talking about. It hasn't been introduced in the anime, but it's a class 1B student, and her name is Setsuna Tokage. Kinda sounds like Izakage, which you should be subscribed to, like, what are you doing with your life? Yeah. 
but her quirk allows her to split her body into 50 pieces and control them like they're levitating. He also has other quirks that I'll use here and there, but those are the quirks that he's mainly going to use. So we left off with the practical part of the entrance exams. As soon as President Mike says go, Deku runs full speed down the street destroying 10 two-pointers. By wrapping them in a web of fire, then they start melting from the heat. He runs around the city doing this for another 30 minutes, and by the time the zero point is over, he has over 200 points. Then he hears a scream. It's the one and only Uraraka. She is stuck under some rubble somehow, 